Hello, you lovely people. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, in this video lesson, we're going to be uh, building on our understanding of magnetic fields and starting to understand how those fields can exert forces upon other objects. Now, just to make it really clear, kind of the distinction and the sequence between our last lesson and this one that we're about to embark on. So our first lesson in this magnetism unit was all about how we can create magnetic fields using electric currents. So even if we don't have like a bar magnet or anything like that, all we have is a wire with a current running through it. That current is enough to create a magnetic field. Okay, so we talked about currents creating magnetic fields. In this lesson, on the other hand, we're going to talk about, okay, if we've already got a pre-existing magnetic field, there's already a bar magnet or something that's creating a magnetic field, and then we end up running a current through that pre-existing magnetic field, how is the current going to be affected by that field? Okay, so last lesson, the current created the field. In this lesson, the field is already there, and the current's just a visitor passing on through, and we want to see what happens to it. So for us to, to start to get a sense of this, we've got a little video uh, demo to watch courtesy of MIT. Thank you, MIT. Now, before we watch it, I just want to kind of introduce you to the general setup of this. So we've got a big circuit here. You can see in sort of like the upper back corner there, this big box, which is a, a big old battery. OK, so we've got a battery there and then wires leading over to a large switch in that clear plastic box over on the right. Okay, so we've got the switch and then we've got this big wire passing through around in a loop to create a complete circuit there. Um, but you may notice that um, in the area where the wire is suspended, where it's kind of orange, it is going in between the two ends of a large, very strong horseshoe magnet. Now, I'm sure you've seen horseshoe magnets before, but just to kind of reiterate. So before we talked about bar magnets where it's just a straight line, north pole on one side, south pole on the other, a horseshoe magnet is the same idea, except if you like folded this in half so that now we've got a U shape and one end has the north pole and the other end has the south pole. And as a result, there's a really strong magnetic field in between those two ends. So that's what we're seeing right here, that we've got these two ends of a horseshoe magnet really strong field in between the two of them um, and that's where our wire is going to be passing through so we want to see then what happens to the wire when there's a current running through it and uh, that current is getting affected by that magnetic field so let's watch uh -huh. all right so there yep battery switch big old wire and the magnet. And so he's going to open and close the switch multiple times. So we'll watch what happens. And I'm going to close the switch, woohoo, and then open it again. Closes it, opens it. Closes the switch, and opens it. All right. Cool. So that was. That was kind of cute. So we saw this interesting thing where the wire has a very strong response uh, to that magnetic field when we have a current running through that. So in order to better unpack what exactly is going on there, we're going to jump over to a little simulation. And this is linked from the slides if you want to go in and play with it yourself. All right, so this simulation, the setup is really similar to what we saw in the demo, just like rotated 90 degrees. OK, so instead of the horseshoe pointing upward, now the horseshoe is on its side. OK, um, and then we're going to kind of look at it from the side. So instead of the wire running horizontally, we're going to be like looking at the wire head on here. OK, and just to kind of orient you to this. So over on the left side, we can see the general setup of the simulation where we can see that complete circuit running through and the current that's going through the wire um, and that that wire running through the middle of that magnetic field. OK, so we know um, from our last lesson that when we look at these magnetic field lines, magnetic field lines always point away from the north and towards the south. So for a horseshoe magnet where we've got north pole on one side on the top here and south pole on the bottom, the, the field is just going to be pointing downward in this situation, away from the north towards the south. And then the current is going to be running straight through like in between those two poles. Um, now, what we might expect to happen if we put the current there in between the two poles is that if the field is pointing down, we would expect that the force 
is also directed downward. That's kind of how it's always been before when we've talked about gravitational fields, a lot of situations in electric fields. We expect the field lines to tell us about the direction of force and for those things to align. And yet, if I take my current carrying wire right here and I drag it into the middle of this field, it doesn't get pushed downward along the field lines. It gets pushed to the right. So it's kind of weird. Like, whoop, there it goes. All right. And just to, to kind of really flesh this whole thing out, um, I'm going to switch the polarity of the magnet. So I'm going to flip it upside down. So now the south pole is on top and the north pole is on bottom. And the force switches direction as well. All right. So I put my current carrying wire in the middle there. It now feels a force to the left. All right. Very, very strange. All right. Fun stuff. So. A couple key takeaways then from the simulation and um, and from the video that we watched. So first of all, in order for there to be a force in a magnetic field, we have to have our charged particles moving perpendicularly through that field. When there was no current applied to the wire in the video, nothing happened. It just sat there um, being, you know, falling down due to gravity, basically. Um, it wasn't until we actually got a current moving and getting those charged particles really moving in a consistent direction through the wire that we saw a noticeable force um, counteracting the effects of gravity pulling it downward. Okay, but once we've got that, that covered, once we've got charged particles all moving perpendicular to the field lines, um, the force that is exerted upon the, uh, the particles, the charged particles or the current, is going to be perpendicular both to the direction of the current and perpendicular to the direction of the field. All right. So that means basically that, that we are tracing out three different dimensions uh, if we look at the current and the field and the force. All right. So um, let's talk about how we can predict the direction of that force then. So um, again, if we have a charged particle moving perpendicularly through the field, uh, it's going to experience a force. And the way that we can figure out the direction of that force is using our right hand, your most useful tool, this entire unit. OK, so um, to figure out the direction of force on a current in a field, first thing you need to do is Take your right hand, left hand does not work, it is the right hand rule, okay? So you take your right hand and you hold it out straight, like stop, okay? So you hold your hand out straight, and then um, your thumb is going to point in the direction of the current. So which way, whichever way our charged particles are moving, that's the direction that your thumb needs to be going as well, all right? So you've got your thumb positioned properly, and then the next thing you need to do is position your fingers in the proper direction. So whichever way the field is going, that's the way that your fingers should be going as well. Um, so that might be up, down, out, in, whatever it might be, okay? So we've got our thumb going in one direction, we've got our fingers going in another direction perpendicular. And again, it's best if you kind of hold out your hand so that you can make as close to an L shape as you can, um, so that they're clearly perpendicular to each other. Once you've done that, the force is shooting out of your palm. Okay, so whichever way your palm is facing, that's the direction of the force acting on our current or our charge particles. Okay, so just to make this really, really clear and give you a little checklist to work with when we're analyzing these situations where a current is, is experiencing a force from a field. Um, those three things, current, field, and force, are always going to be perpendicular to each other. They're going to represent all three spatial dimensions that we have available to us, which means that any time we're analyzing a situation where there's some sort of magnetic force acting upon a current, one of those three things, current, field, or force, will be either up or down. Okay, Up or down has to be represented somewhere among those three things. All right, One of those things, current, field, or force, will have to be directed either left or right. It's got to be in there, too, because we have to have that dimension represented. And then the last one, current field or force, whichever one hasn't been represented yet, will either be into the page or into the screen or whatever you're kind of working on here, or out of the page or out of the screen or, or whatever plane you're kind of working in there. OK, so you're never going to have a situation where you've got like both field and force. You've got one up and one down or current left and force right. We're never going to hit the same dimension twice. We always have to have one from the X dimension, one from the Y dimension and one in the Z dimension. OK, so there's always one that's up or down, 
one that's left or right, one that's into or out of the page, okay? And so if you're missing one of those three dimensions, you done messed up. All right, cool. So um, this is the second time now, this unit, that we're using our right hand to try to figure things out. And um, there are some, some noticeable differences between those, so I just wanna kinda lay those out here for you. So last lesson, we were talking about how to predict the direction of a magnetic field. Uh, using the right-hand rule, and this time we're trying to predict the direction of the magnetic force using the right-hand rule. So here's when you use each of those, okay? You're going to use the field right-hand rule from last unit when the charge particle, the moving charge particle, is making, is producing its own magnetic field, okay? Whereas this new right-hand rule, this new like straight hand right-hand rule, is when we've already got this external magnetic field exerting a force on another moving charge particle that's going through that field, okay? So for the previous right-hand rule, the current is creating the magnetic field. In this new right-hand rule, the current is being affected by the magnetic field, but didn't create that magnetic field, if that makes sense, right? Um, hand position is going to be different. When we're trying to figure out the direction of a field generated by a current, we've got to be curling our fingers. We're doing lots of, like, thumbs up here, or down depending on the direction of your current right um but your fingers are always curling in that situation whereas if we're trying to look at a situation where a magnetic force is being produced we want our fingers straight out right but here's the nice thing even though these are different situations and you're doing different things with your hand the parts of your hand still represent the same things for both of these right hand rules so your thumb is always going to be the direction of the current or the velocity of your charged particles your fingers are always going to represent the direction of the magnetic field and when there is a force the force will be represented by the direction of your palm regardless of which situation you're trying to analyze or which right hand rule you are using so that's good all right um Take a moment to consider then, we're not doing any math this unit, but just qualitatively, what do you think are some of the things that would affect how big of a force a charged particle might feel inside a magnetic field? Hoping maybe you came up with, uh, with one or two of these things. So um, the charge of the particle makes a big difference because if there's no charge, then there's no force. All right. So the, the more charged the particle is, the bigger the force is going to be. The faster the particle or current is moving, the bigger the uh, the force will be. Uh, because again, if there's no velocity, no speed, it's not moving, then there's no force. So it stands to reason that the, the faster you're going, the bigger the force is going to be. And then lastly, the strength of the magnetic field will make a difference. If you've got a stronger magnet, it's going to exert a bigger force upon things that are, are passing through that field. Cool. Um, so let's just check our understanding really quickly here. So imagine that we've got a, a neutron just kind of floating out on its own, traveling down across the screen that you're watching this on, and then it encounters a magnetic field also pointing down. Which way is it going to get pushed? It won't, because it's a neutron. It has no charge. In order to feel a magnetic force, an object, a particle has to have an electric charge to it. Neutrons don't, therefore, they pass through that magnetic field totally obliviously, like nothing's bothering them. Woohoo! All right, so so let's fix that then. All right, so instead of a neutron, let's say now it's a proton that is traveling down across your screen, and then it runs into this magnetic field that's also pointing down. Which way is it going to experience a force? Uh, still no force because this proton is traveling parallel to the field which is kind of this weird thing but it turns out if you're moving along those field lines the field may as well just not even be there like you don't feel any any particular force from it so this proton again totally oblivious to the fact that there is a magnetic field that it is passing through okay 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 so now last last one here all right We've still got a proton, it's still traveling down across your screen, but now it's entering a magnetic field that is pointing to the left instead. Which way is it going to get pushed? The answer is it's gonna get pushed into the screen, towards the screen. And just to kind of unpack that for you, again, the proton is moving downward, so that means the velocity is directed down. So I'm gonna use this as my my makeshift screen here, all right? Cool. So um, velocity is directed down, so my thumb goes down, 
all right, to match the velocity of my proton, all right? So thumb is pointing down, and then the field is directed to the left. So I'm going to make sure that my fingers are pointing to the left while my thumb is still pointing down. Okay, I got to keep track of both of those things at this time. So thumb is down to represent the velocity. Fingers are to the left to represent the field. And then what I notice is that my palm is facing in towards my screen away from me, which means that has to be the direction of the force that is acting upon this proton. Good. Good. All right. Wonderful. Uh, good luck, folks. I love you. You are great. You got